let us look at a different kind of problem. We have seen step shafts with some condition on the comparability condition. Okay. This condition the delta c is delta small delta is a comparability condition. Okay. Next let us look at a composite cylinder say I have a steel pipe filled with concrete. I have the steel pipe filled with concrete. Okay, this is concrete. this is a rigid plate I have two rigid plates on top and bottom and I am subjecting this to a compressive load P. Okay. So, I have a steel pipe filled with concrete and I am subjecting it to a compressive force P. Now, I want to find the stress in find the stress in steel pipe and concrete. Okay. Now, how do you go about solving this problem? A systematic way is to assume some displacement field to compute based on the displacement field the strain from the strain you compute the stresses in the constellation then use the equilibrium equations to relate it to the applied force P. Okay. So, what, what is the possible deformation for this composite system? The plate can move down like this, this rigid plate can move down like this by an amount delta C and I am assuming that this is fixed on the ground. So, this does not move. Okay, I am assuming the top plate alone moves down by an amount delta. So, what will be the and let us assume that the coordinate system is given by this. The coordinate system is given by this orientation x and y in the plane and z along the axis of the cylinder. Okay. Okay. Then what will be the st stress state? What will be your sigma and what will be your epsilon for this deformation? That is the question. Okay. Since I am applying a force along the z direction, there will be stress sigma z z alone and let us assume for the moment that the stresses in other directions and other shear and normal stresses are 0. Okay. This will not be true when the Poisson's ratio of steel and concrete are different. In fact, the Poisson's ratio of steel and concrete are different and hence the stresses in the other directions will not be the same, will not be 0, but we are assuming that they are 0. Okay. Now, what will be the strain corresponding to this? It has displaced the top plate has displaced by amount delta. So, strain roughly is the change in length by the original length or the displacement delta divided by L as we saw in the case of a uniaxial member. Here it is compressing along the z direction and hence the strain is along the z direction and then there will be Poisson strain in the other two directions which for now we will ignore we will ignore this Poisson strain, there is no shear strains. So, we will ignore those strains. Okay. Now, what happens is the stress and the strain are related through the constellation 
Now, sigma z z is e times epsilon z z right. Okay. This is broadly the member are to be made of the same material, but I have now the body made of two materials. Okay. So, what will happen? I will have epsilon z z of concrete will be equal to epsilon z z in steel which will be equal to delta by L because there the plate is rigid there is no rotation there for the steel and concrete to have different strains. The rigid plate moves as a rigid plate and hence the strain in the steel and concrete would be the same. Okay. Now, since the strain I have computed the strain so next I compute the stress in the concrete would be E of concrete times delta by L the strain the concrete and sigma z z of steel would be the Young's modulus of steel into delta by L. Okay. Now, what should I do next appeal to the equilibrium equations. Equilibrium equations is the force in the concrete plus force in the steel the actual force F z in the steel now in the concrete should add up to give me the force P because my rigid plate has this force P coming in there and there is this force F steel and there is the force F concrete. Okay. So, these forces should add up to the applied force P. Now, what is force in concrete? Force in concrete would be the, the force in the concrete would be the stress in the concrete times the area of the concrete. Okay. So, basically from that I get that this implies E concrete into area of concrete into delta by L. This is the force in the concrete plus the force in the steel which will be E of steel to area of steel into delta by L must be equal to the upright force P. Okay. Now, from here I get what is delta, from here I get delta to be P L by area of concrete to Young's modulus of concrete plus area of steel into Young's modulus of steel. Okay. So, I have found what delta is and related to the applied force P. Okay. So, what are we interested in mechanics relating the force to the displacement. So, given a force P I know what will be the displacement delta here now. Okay. But what I am interested in this problem I am interested in finding the stress in steel pipe and stress in the concrete pipe. So, coming back to the expression for the stress in the concrete. So, sigma z z of concrete would be E of concrete into delta by L. So, that will be P divided by area of concrete to Young's modulus of concrete plus area of steel into Young's modulus of steel. Similarly, sigma z z of steel would be Young's modulus of steel into P divided by area of concrete Young's modulus of concrete plus area of steel into Young's modulus of steel. Okay. So, this will be the state of stress in the concrete and the steel pipe. Okay. On the other hand if I were to consider the differences in the Poisson's ratio what will happen that is the question next that we want to consider. If I, if I were to consider the Poisson's effect what will happen the strain delta by L here will result in a strain of minus mu delta by L and here it will be minus mu delta by L. Right. Now, since the Poisson's ratio is different but delta by L is same what will happen is the concrete will expand differently from how much the steel expands. 
okay so there will be a interfacial stress that develops between the concrete and the steel okay so in that case the free body diagram for this member will become this is a steel pipe there will be some inner pressure P i acting here the steel ok added to that there will be sigma z z acting along the circumference of the steel pipe there will be a sigma z z circumferential stress acting along the circum actual stress acting along the circumference of the steel pipe to sigma z z and in the concrete the concrete the concrete pipe there will be the counterpart of this p i Newton third law coming into effect this concrete cylinder will be subjected to a external pressure p i ok and it will also be subjected to an axial compression along its circular cross section into sigma z z of concrete. Sigma z z of concrete this is sigma z z of steel ok. Now, the state of stress is no longer uniaxial it is biaxial to say the least if not triaxial ok. So, basically you have to know then how to solve the problem of an annular cylinder being inflated or a solid cylinder being deflated ok to be able to solve this problem. We will come to this full solution of a three dimensional inhomogeneous axial member later in this course ok. All that I want to say is this solution that sigma z z of concrete is E of concrete times applied load divided by E of concrete into area of concrete plus E of steel into area of steel and so on applies only when you make the assumption that the steel and concrete are the same Poisson's ratio or ignore the second dimensional or third dimensional effects of the body you are interested only primarily in the axial deformation of the body then only these expressions will hold ok.